Episode 2 of Crash Test Diva. I'm your host, Christy Eikers. Ever since I was little, I've been a bit of a ringleader in creating fun and amusement. In the beginning, I created some neighborhood variety shows in our garage in Mankato, Minnesota. A little later, I helped my 4-H club write some acts for our annual talent show. And a high school highlight was creating skits for our pep assemblies. Now, as I grew older... My outlet was hosting goofy theme parties. But as the years have passed, the role of fun and amusement ringleader somehow has transitioned to dog paddler of daily demands. I'm at this point in my life where things aren't all rainbows and butterflies. As I approach the mid-century mark, the price per wear on my funeral uniform has gone down, way down. I've cooked and delivered countless casseroles for friends battling illness, and I've often felt like I was in a funk. This thing called life isn't easy. I've got my vices to escape my reality. I binge watch, I cook with wine, and sometimes you'll see me playing some games on my iPhone. Most recently, I found refuge when I pushed play to listen to my favorite podcasts, Last spring, I just needed to get my joy back. I had this realization that I'm at my best when I'm creating. I needed to find a hobby, but not a typical hobby. To say knitting, gardening, and scrapbooking are not my jam would be an enormous understatement. I needed to find an outlet for my ideas and my desire to amuse people. I decided to try to produce a podcast. In launching this podcast, I'm hoping it will be an escape from my own reality. Now, in listening to this podcast, I hope it will be a distraction from your daily grind. As I mentioned, this is a hobby, and I'm still learning. I've got a long way to go to figure out how to do this, especially recording interviews. But I hope you'll be patient and keep listening so you can hear some improvement each week. Today, I'll be introducing a few friends, a new segment, we'll call it the educational portion of the show, and we will have a long-distance serenade to a group of lifelong girlfriends from Georgia. Let's get started. For different segments, I'll be inviting people to join me and share their stories. Today, I've invited my dear friend, Mark Howard, to join me for the tip of the day. To introduce you, I'd like to share three things I think you should know about Mark. He loves to track the weather. He lives in Fort Lauderdale, and I swear he was absolutely giddy watching the little color map on the Weather Channel website change colors for the week leading up to Hurricane Irma. Number two. Well, you should know that Mark, he suffers from bacteria phobia. He has this crazy fear of food spoiling. He gets anxious If he has to sit in traffic after he has been grocery shopping, he will literally rush from his parking ramp to get his food into the fridge. And finally, to say Mark loves to travel would be a huge understatement. Travel is his passion. Now, fortunately for me, Mark has treated me to many domestic and international vacations, We are going to have him on in future episodes to talk about some of our travel adventures, but today I have him on to share a tip of the day. Please keep in mind, the tips we share are not earth-shattering. They are simple things to do to make life easier, or in this case, a little bit more pleasant. Mark has to share this tip with me every time we travel. Mark... 
with that said, welcome to the show. I'm Would actually, you like to? Sh- <laughs> I'm actually Would you surprised like- I didn't interrupt you on any of those. I'd like to add that that bacteria phobia <laughs> gave me the uh, my skin crawled when you just mentioned it just now on the, on the introduction. But all accurate and actually not overstated. So thank you. <laughs> Oh, thank you. That means a lot. (laughs) So, Mark, we have to talk about this amazing tip that you've shared with me on every one of our travel travel adventures. Well, I might want to throw in there. It may not be um, earth shattering, but it is patent pending because I think I'm onto something here. (laughs) Fantastic. Oh, my gosh. Um, my, My tip, are you ready for it? Drum roll. I don't know if I have that. I don't think I've figured out how to use those sound effects, but if I can find one, my friend, I will give you a drum roll, okay? Okay. Well, my, my tip of the day um, is to take bounce dryer sheets. I prefer bounce over downy. I've experimented with several. I pack three or four in all of my clean luggage when I'm traveling to a destination, and then I also take five additional bounce dryer sheets that could extend to 10 if it's a longer trip and put those in a Ziploc bag for the return trip for the dirty clothes. Now I use dirty with air quotes because nay, I say that my clothes aren't very dirty very often because let's go back to, t- to the introduction where tip number two, come on, <laughs> I like to be clean. Do you remember, um, who taught you this tip or where did you learn this amazing tip? I'm a pretty self-taught guy, Chris, in my life. I can barely say that with a straight face. (laughs) Uh I I don't know where the dryer sheet part came from. I do think I created it myself, but it started with me putting the dryer sheets under my fitted sheet in my bed. And, you know, speaking to the hostess with the most is here on this show right now, she's knowing that you don't like chemicals of certain <laughs> nature. I'm sure that makes your skin crawl that I was sleeping on a bed of bounce dryer sheets. Now I just use I feel for like, You know what? I feel like our audience today has gotten two tips of the day because now not only can you put your bounce dryer sheets in the luggage to make your, your, Clothes smell good upon arrival, and then I, I don't. Why do you put them in there on the way home? Because you don't want your dirty clothes to stink up the rest of them. I don't I, understand. I, I, again, it's just an experience of freshness throughout my <laughs> my life. And I've actually, you know, if you want to take it to tip two A part B, um, I now put them in my uh, workout shoes because I'm exercising more. And so I put a dryer sheet in each shoe after a workout, <laughs> and it's amazing how it absorbs the sweat. And if there was an odor, which I would actually challenge anyone to say that my feet smell to begin with. Do you change the dryer sheet daily then for that? No, yeah, it's probably about a three or four day um, cycle. I have extra ones in my gym bag that just kind of float around. There are dryer sheets that, that literally fall out of every aspect of my life. It's rather but ridiculous. how many dryer sheets do you go through? Because I couldn't tell you the last time I had to buy a new box. Um, I, the, I think I get the 140 count. I don't buy more because I'm afraid that they'll become unfresh in the box in the, in the dryer and I, I know what some of those listeners might be thinking but it, it's true I'm a little OCD with it with that stuff so. do you remember one time at Mark and I when we travel at one point I started making Mark like sleep shirts so I would make a custom made sleep shirt for our trip <laughs> uh, to you know memorialize that trip if you will and I'd present it to him on the trip and do you remember my friend Christy Wodak what she made for you one time she made a dryer sheet t-shirt it was a woman uh, holding a dryer sheet and I don't remember the tagline though I think it said never underestimate the power <laughs> of a bounce dryer sheet <laughs> Well, I, you know what? I'm going to find a photo of that, or you'll probably find a photo of it, and I'll post it in the show notes for our listeners. Yeah, I have it, I'm sure, in our photo, in our photo albums. Okay. Well, Mark, thank you for sharing that amazing tip. Now, I have to tell everybody that Mark has agreed to stick around to join us for our next segment. Yep, it's time for Ding Dong Doozies. And Mark tends to keep track of the quote-unquote brain farts for our circle of friends. In fact, I've seen him literally pull out his iPhone notes section and take notes after we say something super stupid. And as I'm sure you've gathered, he is a bit of a smartass, and he chooses to remind us of these moments uh, where we have a brain lapse regularly. Uh, Mark, are you ready to share this week's ding-dong doozy with the audience? 
Well, my ding dong doozy is, is about a dear friend of ours, uh, who Christy also knows her name's Terry Evitable. And when I describe her, I, I have to do my accent because she's from New York and her name's Terry and I call it Terry and picture my hands going up and down like Barbara Streisand, even though she's not Jewish, she's Italian, but I tell her it's very hard to decipher the two because she's so damn funny. And the, ter- the terrorisms that we have, and I call them terrorisms because they're you can't believe what's coming out of her mouth. We are talking about a super intelligent woman here, correct? Yep. As she would say, she's a clinician, which means she's a nurse and she is very educated. She's got a, she's a, a nurse. She's worked in operating room, um, operating rooms. She's uh, terribly bright. I just have to like, I, you know, f- to protect my sister here, I have to give her a little props on this one, but she does say really funny stuff, really well, funny stuff. And to so know her is to, going. yes, and to know her is to love her. And she knows that um, I would tell this to her face because I do often, as Christy said, I bring up my notes, and I brought up a few for tonight um, for for my point, and I, a couple of them are very brief. An example is one time we were talking, and she referred to um, PBR radio. She wanted to know if we if I listened to PBR radio. Well, the only PBR that I know is a beer from the Midwest that my brother drinks, uh, and she was referring to NPR. She also um, informed me that she smelled like Bulgaria, and I, I seemed a little stunned. I said, what do you mean you, sell, you smell like Bulgaria? And she said, well, is smelling like Bulgaria a bad thing? And I said, well, if you want to smell like an Eastern war-torn nation, yes, um, but perhaps you smell like Bulgaria. So these are just a couple examples of my terrorisms that I deal with. And the list goes on and on and on. And one last one that that Terry shared with me recently, she was going through a career change and she was mentioning that she didn't want her career. She felt like her career was in a bit of a slum. And I said, your career's in a bit of a slum. And she said, yeah, I I feel like it's on a downturn. And I said, well, that, that would be a slump, uh, with a P, uh, you need to add that to make that an effective uh, contribution to the conversation about where your career is right now. So she thought her career was in a slum and, uh, it really was in a slump. And you know what, Mark, with that, to, to know you is also to love you, my friend. <laughs> well, thank I'm God. sure our listeners can't wait for our next special guest appearance by you, which I'm sure will be very soon. Thank you for everything, my friend. Well, thanks, Chris. It was a pleasure. It's time for our long distance serenade. This is the time in the show where we give a nod to Casey Kasem's long distance dedication. But instead of a sappy romantic story of lovers torn apart by miles... We celebrate our friends and fun times from years gone by. And instead of playing the actual song, we have the Renaissance Rebel, my friend John Collins, who will strum out an acoustic version. In this segment, we rely on you guys to submit requests. Check the show notes to learn how. For these first few episodes, however, I needed to recruit some friends. To help out on this episode... I go way back to summer camp, Camp Minnewanka in Muskegon, Michigan. This is where I first met Holly Catherine Drake from Georgia. Holly, what's your long distance serenade? So I want Renaissance Rebel to sing, um, you never even called me by my name. And it's from David Allen Coe. Well, I'm writing in for this song because this song has so much meaning to me. Um, It's a song that was belted and screamed and um, even giggled through um, when I was in college at the University of Georgia in Athens. These were women that I have known since I was three years old. Um, actually, I knew Christy. Um, we were in nursery together in church. I was born in February, and she was born in April, and we grew up in the nursery together at church. Um, I have known Felicia since I was five, and I've known Susie since I was three. And so these women are my soul sisters. They're they're sis- they're the sisters I never had because I grew up with three brothers in the house. 
I'd really like for him to play You Never Even Called Me By My Name by Dave and Alan Coe. And um, I'd like for him to play that for Susie and for Felicia and for Christy in Heaven. Oh, that's so sweet. Okay, this one goes out to you and your girls. Well, it was all that I could do to keep from crying. Sometimes it seems so useless to remain. You don't have to call me darling, darling. You never even called me by my name. In 1991, Saturday Night Live launched a new sketch, Coffee Chat, where Mike Myers played the role of Linda Richman, a middle-aged Jewish woman with an exaggerated New York accent. Whenever Richmond would get upset, she would put her hand on her chest and say, I'm getting a little verklempt. At the time, I had no idea verklempt was a Yiddish word. I just knew I loved the word. You see, I am a crier. I cry when I'm happy, sad, excited, nervous. You name it, I cry. And I loved that after that sketch, I had a new expression to use when I was getting a little choked up. Just over 10 years ago, I was introduced to an amazingly talented hair therapist, Benjamin Rodich. Three things you should know about Benjamin. Benjamin has an extremely kind and generous spirit. He shares his love for life with anybody who is lucky enough to cross his path. He is an amazing cook and has an obsession for aioli and finding the right vessel for consumption. We'll get to this in a future episode. Finally, Benjamin had a Jewish grandmother who taught him Yiddish. Unlike spending time in a dentist chair, I look forward to the time I spend in Benjamin's chair. He is a wildly gifted storyteller, and he often interjects Yiddish words or expressions into his tales. Being a curious gal, I often ask him to explain the word he just used. The lessons that follow are always amusing. As I was designing this podcast, I knew I needed to include Benjamin. And what better way than to have him play the role of the Yiddish Yapper? Yapping, Yiddish Yapping, Yiddish Yapping, Yiddish Yapping, yeah, yeah. In this week's lesson with the Yiddish Yapper, it's all about the Tuchus. Um, Tuchus. Tuchus. Kind of got a... <laughs> like Hakalugi? No. <laughs> okay, it's the Tukas. 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 I'll work on it. Keep going. Excellent. <laughs> so the tu- the, the Tukas, which of course most of you probably have heard from one of your friends before or seen it, is the butt. And of course, any of you that were little children surrounded by women, it's all about the Tukas. From the very time that you're a little baby and your legs are dangling in the air, they say. Look at the t- look at look at his butt, isn't it? The cutest little butt in the whole world, except it sounds so much better when you talk about it in Yiddish. It does. Because from the it's moment cute. you're born, everybody's around saying, Oy vey, look at the tuchus. Give a cook at the tuchus. Okay, oy vey. Oy vey is, oh my. Okay. And it's, it's sort of this exaggerated, oh, and it, it tends to draw attention when you say that. It's sort of like gathering the eyes around you, like, oy vey. Oh, yeah. Although there were also a couple of times when I would sit down and I would eat a lot and my grandmother would look at me and say, oi, hey. <laughs> okay, wait. You used another word in there and it was a good one. It sounded fun. About the tukas. Do you need me to back up this tape? Give a cook? Yeah, what's that? Give a cook is give a look. Oh, give a yeah. cook. Give a cook at the tukas. And so the tukas plays, you know, many roles in, in, in the childhood of a, of a, Jewish, of a Jewish kid. You know, it's the word that you hear a lot. It's get, get your tuchus to your room and get dressed. Get your tuchus to the bathroom and brush your teeth. Get your tuchus to the bus stop. You're going to be late. Get your tuchus moving. My grandmother's saying, I'm going to give you a patch on the tuchus. 
which was kind of give you a smack on the chuchus. Um, and, you know, of course, there are different sizes of chuchuses. <laughs> So other Yiddish words come to mind. Some of us were are sparser in that area, and some of us have enough to share. Um, we won't Preach. talk about who. Um, clearly, this episode is all about the base. So, <laughs> you know, there are, are definitely moments I remember walking through the grocery store, and as a little kid, you're sort of at direct eye range with every tuchus. You've got big tuchuses, you've got little tuchuses, and I don't know why, but ever since that word tuchus was in my, kind of implanted into my head, every time I look at a butt, I think in my head, tuchus. Well, it's a good word. It's a good word. Tea. Drink some mouthwash and gargle it and try to say it while you're gargling. It might help. My big, funky tuchus. Is that better? No. I'll work on it. Yeah, that's okay. Benjamin, thank you so much for this week's lesson in Yap and Yiddish. Because it is all about the... Since I introduced you to my dear friend Mark at the beginning of the show, I thought I'd close the show with a story about one of our travel adventures in the Faroe Islands. This is another story from opening night of my Fringe Festival show. I'm apologizing in advance because the audio is not great. It was shot at the Bryant Lake Bowl in Minneapolis on an iPhone from the third row. While the sound isn't great, I think it'll give you a little insight into me my friendship with Mark, and you may even learn about the Faroe Islands. Without further ado, let me tell you a story. Our next stop is the Faroe Islands. I don't know if many of you have heard of the Faroe Islands. But something I have to confess about going on vacation, I'm a little bit different than most because one of my favorite parts about vacation is packing. I love the strategy of packing. You know, you have to mix and multiply to make everything work. Well, I have a dear friend, Mark, who a few years back started taking me on an annual European summer cruise. And um, my first cruise I went on, I developed this massive spreadsheet, you know, to make sure I had everything and all my outfits working. Now, for those of you who've never been on a cruise, you need to know that you need three outfits a day. You need your touring outfit, you need your lounging around outfit, and then you need your evening attire. And two of the evenings are formal wear. So there is truly a strategy involved. Now, I'm happy to report that since then, there's an iPhone app for wardrobe planning, so I don't bring my enormous spreadsheet anymore. So I was preparing for this trip, um, and I see a few men in the crowd. You might not understand something else about a woman's wardrobe, but we women, there are some pivotal pieces to the wardrobe planning. Primarily the accessories, and most importantly, the shoes. <laughs> Especially those evening <laughs> shoes, right? Okay, thank you. Um, you have to have your going out pants hem to match the pump that you're wearing, and then it has to work with like the dress or the skirt you're wearing, and then if you're really good, you get a pair of jeans hem to work with those same um, uh, shoes. Okay, so it was two days before our trip on a Nordic cruise, and the phone rings, and it's Mark. Uh, hon, you know, I was thinking, when are we ever gonna be in the Faroe Islands again? Uh, we should do something while we're there. I found a hike. It's got breathtaking views, so I, I booked us on a hike. I don't hike. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, sounds good. Well, hon, um, I was reading, and it says that we're supposed to bring hiking boots for this. <laughs> hiking boots? Are you kidding me? I had not planned my wardrobe strategy around a pair of hiking boots. But wait a second, maybe I could go out and buy some of those all-terrain <coughs> shoes and I could get those, and then I wouldn't have to bring my tennis shoes, you know, the ones I always include in case I ever make it to the fitness center. <laughs> well, those all-terrain shoes would work on a treadmill, so I could compare those. I headed out to REI, and I found the all-terrain shoes, and I studied the labels. There were two on sale, and let's be honest, I don't want to spend a lot on these because, you know, my price per wear was not going down. So I started to study the labels, and I looked at them closely. The $10 difference, what was I going to get? 
was features. Well, the pair that was more expensive had one other feature, and it was called waterproof. I didn't need that. <laughs> I went with that cheaper pair. A few days later, we boarded the ship, and the first night on a cruise is like electric. People are absolutely thrilled to finally be on vacation. And that first night, they're usually taking full advantage of their unlimited drink packages. <laughs> well, I went into the first night, this wasn't my first cruise, and I mentally prepared and I was like, okay, Christy, you need to pace yourself. You have 10 nights ahead of you. You need to, you know, stretch out the fun. Don't have it all in one night. So that night I went out and one of my favorite things about a cruise ship is that I get to dance every night. You know, I love to dance, but at some point, going to the club, it just becomes a little creepy for the old gal to get up there. And you know, there are only so many wedding dances you can crash. But a cruise ship is a totally age-appropriate environment for me to dance. I go out dancing every night. Well, the odd thing, that first night, no one is ever dancing. Everyone's around, and they're sitting like with their husbands around the perimeter, and no one's dancing. Well, I become a self-appointed cruise director and make it my mission to fill that dance floor. So I will notice a woman tapping her foot. I got a live one. I'll introduce myself. I'm Christy. Let's dance. I'll get a lot of people dancing. Come on. And with a little encouragement, she comes on the dance floor. I ask her her name and usually figure out she doesn't speak English. <laughs> and we keep dancing and I keep filling the dance floor. Julie McCoy from the Love Boat has nothing on me. <laughs> so we stayed out dancing really late that night. And the next morning I woke up. I woke up and I groaned, oh no, I peaked early. <laughs> that was also the morning of our hike in the Faroe Islands. I strapped on my new hiking shoes, and Mark and I headed down to the excursion desk, and we boarded three buses with 120 hikers, and we headed up. We got to this area where we were gonna start the hike, and it was about a 60 degree incline. And I started to look around, and I noticed my fellow hikers did not get the message about the hiking boots. Some of them were wearing tennis shoes, a couple women, ballet flats, and a few in flip-flops. Why did I waste my dumb money on those? Are you kidding? Well, I started to watch the first couple dozen of people climb, and as they slipped, slid, and struggled, I tried to figure out my own strategy for this. And I decided, when it was my turn, I was gonna go fast. <laughs> now, thankfully, Mark had gone before me, so I rushed up. I got about halfway up. Mark reached back and pretty much dragged me the rest of the way. <laughs> and so it went for a while. Now, you need to know something about the Faroe Islands. The Faroe Islands, well, it's made up of 18 islands near Iceland. Uh, there are 38,000 people living on the Faroe Islands. In addition to that, there are 70,000 sheep. <laughs> so what does this mean to a hiker? The sheep ship to step ratio is dangerously high. <laughs> I, I didn't have time to look at the views, I was just watching my step. <laughs> well, at one point we made it to a point and everyone was taking these gorgeous pictures and uh, I was standing there and I hear, Christy, Christy. <laughs> Oh, it was one of the dancing dames from the night before. <laughs> Hi. This happened repeatedly, and Mark just looked at me and said, only you would find a friend on the top of the Faroe Islands. <laughs> <laughs> well, we made it to this huge point. It was this black point. It looked like a parking lot to me. And I just kept looking. People were taking these pictures. I just kept looking because there was this bridge. Where were those buses? They had to be getting up here soon. <laughs> As the last hiker came up, our tour guide said, and now we go down. Well, if you thought going up was hard, going down was miserable. They had experienced an unusual amount of rain, and so it was this mushy, boggy terrain, and there were multiple streams I had to step over. Well, after um, my 
third digger. Mark developed an every man for himself attitude to support <laughs> Bus. We made it back to the ship, and as we walked back to our cabin, I could feel something in my foot. It was really sore. We got into the cabin, and I took off my shoe to reveal the world's biggest blister. It was huge. It was throbbing. There was so much pain, but the pain was quickly overshadowed by this anxiety I was feeling. You see, I could tell that blister was in exact alignment to the strap on the gold stilettos I planned to wear four nights on the ship. Hashtag, the struggle is real. <laughs> Thankfully, I was traveling with a woman who was a nurse, and she like had a rolling drugstore with her, and she produced these amazing gel band-aids. They were just, they were miracle band-aids. I'm happy to report by the end of the trip, I was able to work the gold stilettos back into the wardrobe rotation. <laughs> now, I never, ever leave home when I pack. Those, those band-aids have become a staple in my packing strategy. And if I'm ever faced with a choice, I always pay extra for waterproof. <laughs> That's it for episode two. I want to thank my friend Holly for sharing her favorite college drinking song for our long distance serenade. And JC, the Renaissance Rebel, when I told him what he needed to sing this episode, he said, oh yeah, I know that song. My buddies were singing it this year in Sturgis. Don't forget, we need you to submit requests for this segment. Check out the show notes to learn how. Thanks to our own Yiddish yapper, Benjamin Rodich, I'm increasing my Yiddish vocab. Learning how to podcast has really been kicking my tuchus. See, I was paying attention. I probably need some work on the pronunciation, though. Many thanks to Mark Howard for that invaluable travel hint, sharing some ding-dong doozies, and for taking me on that breathtaking hike in the Faroe Islands. Again, I want to thank Josie Akers for her mad digital marketing. Thanks to her, you're seeing Crash Test Diva in all your social media feeds. Join us for episode three. I'll share a very recent ding-dong doozy about a Halloween party. Our long-distance serenade will feature a song from a Minnesota music legend, and we'll spice things up during our test drive. Remember, bruises are like life. The harder you get hit, the more colorful and interesting they get. Thanks again for listening. I hope you've been able to escape a little of your own reality and enjoyed the show. Bye.